Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm in my dance attire, y'all. I've uh, been dancing since eight o'clock this morning. And I said I was going to do a live today. So we are here, we are here. I um, I'm checked into, I'm checked into my hotel. And so I'm excited to be able to chill out for the night. But we are talking about the bold life. We are talking about courageous living. And so I'm really excited to just continue that. Uh, you all really responded so well yesterday when, um, you know, we were talking about courageous living and uh, living the bold life. And uh, so I'm just, I'm excited to keep going. I'm excited. You know, so many people said, hey, this is, this was for me. And that's great. That's so great. So listen, um, if this is your first time joining me, I'm Tamika Hall. Uh, I'm too tired to even talk about myself today, right? <laughs> I feel too tired. But I'm Tamika Hall. I'm the CEO of I Worship 96 FM Radio. Hey, Amber, how you doing? Um, uh, the founder of the She Wins Conference. And we are talking about winning in this season. So whether you are a female or a male, we are talking about winning and what it takes to win. And it's all about having a winning mindset, right? Yeah, that's what it's all about, Deja. It's about us having a winning mindset and being able to walk in the bold life and walk courageously. All those things are so important. And Somebody actually said they made a comment on a y'all. I've been teaching dance. You hear it in my voice, right? You hear it in my voice. <clears throat> I've been I've been screaming. Like, forgive me. I'm in my dance teacher voice, right? That's what I say to all the kids. But so uh, one of the things that somebody actually said to me, which I thought was good, um, they talked about the video yesterday where we were talking about learning how to say no without giving an explanation. Listen, that is so important to learn how to say no. And one of the things they talked about is that it is an acquired skill. It's a skill, right? And so some people have no problem you know, saying no. Some people have no problem asking for the things that they want. Like some people just... They're just bold like that. And I remember thinking to myself, man, I wish I was like that. And I remember saying to myself, man, I wish I was more like kids. You know, I remember I, um, I had a pastor that I was growing up and I remember I took his children to an event with me and I remember his child who actually went on, you know, to become Miss Black USA. She's incredibly amazing, Renee Bull. And I remember saying to uh, Pastor Sybil Bull, they're the pastors, of uh, Powerhouse Ministries over in Smyrna, Delaware. And I remember saying to her, I mean, this, I might have been, I think, maybe 22, maybe 23, maybe 24. And I remember saying to her how much I admired Renee. I, I admired her because I remember Renee walked into a room and she just stood in front of the people. She didn't care who they were. She went to the organizers. She asked for posters. She was asking for all this stuff, right? And she expected to get it. She had no problem asking. And everything she asked for, she got it. And I remember thinking to myself, this is a child. Because as a, at the time, I, don't, I think she might have been a preteen, right? But I was so inspired by that. And I remember at one point, I actually would pray and ask God to, you know, help me be more like Renee, right? I've never even told her that, I don't think. I've never even told her that. But I remember being like, man, I wish I was more like kids. Because see, children, a lot of times, they will ask for what they want. And they just keep it moving. It's us as adults, or maybe if you were like me as a kid, you for, you were scared to ask people for the things that you wanted, you know, and stuff like that. So we're, today we're taking it further. Yesterday we learned how to say no. We learned that you don't always have to give some full out explanation for why you're not going to do something, for why something does not fit with your life at that moment. So we talked about that yesterday. If you missed it, go back and catch it. Today we're talking about Learn how to ask for the things that you want, right? Here is the thing. The world is really open to people who ask for things that they want. Why is that? Because number one is communication, right? People don't know what you want or what you need if you never ask for it, right? So it's like if you find yourself wanting something or you need something, you really can't get mad when people can't read your mind about the stuff that you need. Now, let's just be real. All of us have said it, you know? 
people that I've poured into and I've given things to them, there have been times where I'm like, why don't people ever give to me in my time of need? Or, you know, how come every time somebody needs something, they'll come to me, but nobody ever helps me? Well, guess what? A lot of times when I give to people, it's because they ask, right? And the other thing I've also come to understand, everybody is not like me right? Everybody's not like me, Maria. They're not like me, Tanisha. They're not like me, Gary. They're not. Everybody's not like you. So while you may find yourself being very sensitive to other people's needs, I think that's a gift that God gives us, right? Because everybody does not do that. But everybody's not like us, right? If you find yourself giving or you see what people need and you accommodate the need even without them asking, Everybody's not like that. So I've come to understand that and I've come to understand that it is okay to ask for the things that you want. I've also come to understand that if you don't ask for what you want, then you can count on the fact that there's a 50-50 chance that you may or may not get it, right? And, and actually the odds are probably slimmer than that. And uh, I find if it's something that I really want, I'd rather bet on myself and ask for it. So we're, we're going to talk about that now. If we want to get biblical, I'm totally fine with that. If you go to James 4 and 3, James 4 and 3 says it plainly for us right in the Bible. It says you, you ask, if, if, you know, if you ask, you don't receive, right? Now, of course, you know, and James is also talking about, you know, asking and having evil intentions and different things like that. But what I want us to take from it is if you don't ask for something, then you can't expect to receive that, right? So that's something that's right in the word. So <clears throat> if you want to learn how to ask for things and be successful and get the stuff that you want, here's a couple of things that I think you should keep in mind. Number one, when you ask, you got to act as if you expect to get it, right? I find that, um, you know, sometimes I'm afraid to even ask God for things. Number one, I'm afraid because sometimes I think I'm not ready for the stuff that I'm asking for, right? Like sometimes I think that what I'm asking for is just, it's just too much. And uh, I'm sorry, I hate when people play with their hair on lives, but y'all, your girl has been dancing for four and a half hours. So, okay. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I've, I've, I've come to find that you have to be, you, you got to be bold about asking for the things that you want and the things that you need. Isn't that right, Shaquan? And I've even come to say, I, I've been honest with God. <clears throat> Lord, I'm afraid to ask you for this, but God, this is what I want, right? Like, you know, everybody is so quick in the, in, in the church to say to us, well, God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. No, I mean, he didn't give us the spirit of fear, but he didn't say that we would never be afraid. That's not what God said. If we were never afraid, how would we ever know <clears throat> that he's our comforter and that he's, you know, our provider? If you, if you never knew what it was like to be in lack, how would you, how would you not know that you can lean on God? Some of my best moments of discovering who God was is because I did find myself being fearful. I did find myself being nervous. That means he does not send that spirit of fear. It doesn't mean that you're never going to be afraid. Sure, you're going to be afraid. The Bible also says you got to have the faith the size of a mustard seed. If you were never afraid of anything, why would that verse even be in the Bible? You get what I'm saying? Like, if he's saying to you, if you just believe me a little bit, if you trust me just a little bit, you know, he said he'll give us things that we desire. He'll provide for us, right? He'll make a way. So if you're afraid of some of the things that you're asking for, I don't believe that I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not so religious that I believe that God is not going to bless you because you admit I'm nervous about this thing. You know, I'm scared about this thing. Having faith doesn't mean that you don't have fear. Having faith means that you operate even when you have fear. It's like God... I'm afraid, but I know that you got me, right? Like, I believe that you can have both. I don't care what people say. People say you can't have faith and be afraid. What? That doesn't make any sense because, again, the word wouldn't say have faith the size of a mustard seed. That says to me, if I have faith just a little bit because I know who my daddy is, right? I know who daddy God is. I might still be fearful, but, God, I'm going to walk in this thing because you told me that I'm the lender and not the borrower. You told me that I'm the head and I'm not the tail. So in order for me to assume the position, I got to have faith in, in who you said that I was, right? That's so important, right, for you to understand that. So number one, when you ask for something, whether it's God, whether it's somebody else, you got to act as if you expect to get it, right? When your children ask you for something, 
You know, when your boss asks you for something, when somebody that you work with asks you for something, they ask you because they expect to get what they're asking for, right? Now, it's up to you whether you say yes or no to that. But the point of the matter is, <laughs> is that they ask and they expect it to be done, right? So part of the art of asking for something and actually receiving it is expecting that it's going to happen, right? So stop, stop asking for stuff that you don't think is going to actually happen. Like that's, that's just crazy. Ask for it and prepare, like prepare and act like it's going to happen. I like that Shaquan. Shaquan says act with expectation. Absolutely. I love it, right? So act with expectation. Ask with expectation. It, just like yesterday when I said, if you do give an explanation for why you said no, you need to do it in such a way that it does not leave room for discussion, right? So you don't leave room. You don't leave it on a question mark. If I'm asking you for something, I'm asking you for it because it's something that I need, but I'm not really leaving it up for debate. Right. If you are throwing a conference like when I put on the She Wins conference, I went to companies and I asked them to sponsor things. I went to them and I said, I'm going to have at least 50 women in the room. We are sold out. I need 50 samples of your product. Are you willing to do that? Guess what? A lot of them accommodated it. Some people didn't respond. So what? Right. But I asked them for what I needed. <clears throat> Because if you go to somebody and you say, hey, listen, I'm having a women's conference. Just give me what you need. You might get three things. I had 50 women I wanted to accommodate, right? And I was nervous about asking. Probably the first two times. After that, man, I just sent the email. It's like either you're going to respond or you're not going to respond. I'm not going to die. Like, and I was pleasantly surprised, you know, by the people that were excited to accommodate those things, right? So, the second thing, the art, and you guys know I always got my pen. This is this is this is the hotel pen, but whatever. I like pens. It, it gives me it gives my hand something to do. The art of asking for something and actually receiving it is you gotta ask the right people. We ask the wrong people for things that we need, right? If you are in need of a financial blessing, why are you going to people that you know are broke? That's crazy. Why are you going to people that you know don't like you? Why are you going to people that you know can't stand you? Why are you going to people that you can't stand? It doesn't make any sense. If you know you need advice and mentorship on running your business or your ministry, why are you going to people who've never done it before, right? You're seeking advice from people who don't have anything to advise you about, right? I mean, legitimately, I have people that I care about a lot. I have people that are incredibly smart, you know, and, uh, but they've never run a business. I do not ask them for business advice. That doesn't make sense. Now, if I'm asking you how to budget a certain amount of money, maybe I can go and ask you for that because maybe you know how to play the stock market, right? You know how to invest in different things. I can ask you about that, but I'm not gonna ask you about running a radio station if you've never done that. That doesn't make sense. So you have to start asking the right people. So just because you need something, it takes some thought, right? So before you go asking for things, think it through. Right. <clears throat> the third thing is, so you you're, you're expecting to get what you need. You've found the right people to ask. Well, the next thing you got to do is you got to get their full attention. You know, make them pay attention to what you're saying. I'm going to tell you something. I am. I am so busy. I, I really am. And I know a lot of people say that stuff. Right. So I don't think I'm any busier than anybody else. All I can speak to you is for myself. I am incredibly busy. So. I will have clients, they will contact me incessantly because they need to talk to me about something. And what I do is I make sure that I can speak to them when I have the actual time to do that, right? They get my undivided attention, right? Don't talk to me when I'm, I'm running here, you know, to and fro. And then if you are catching somebody and they're on the go, then you need to make them listen to you. You need, you need to be able to speak to them with authority. Speak to them, not like you're going in there being nasty and like a diva or, you know what I'm saying, being arrogant. No, you need to be able to speak to them about what you need, why you need it, and also you need to make them listen to you. If you can tell that somebody's not listening to you, well, you got to figure out how to flip the conversation. Do you get what I'm saying? You got to figure out how to flip the conversation. So, again... Ask and expect to get it. Ask the right person. Get their full attention. Sometimes if you don't have somebody's full attention, they don't even know what you're asking. I'm going to tell you because I'm that type of person. If somebody's talking to me and they see me typing, right, I get that a lot. People come and start talking to me and they see I'm in the middle of something. That is the wrong time to talk to me about stuff. Like, 
I will make myself stop, <laughs> okay? But if you see me in the middle of something, <sighs> it's the wrong time. It's the wrong time, right? So I may not hear you or I may hear you, but I've had people that will do it and then they say something and it piques my interest. Okay, I'll close the computer up, let's talk, right? Let's, let's get this thing said. So you gotta make sure you have their attention. The other thing is, and a lot of people don't under, they don't like this, and for some reason people don't get it, and I hate to say this, a lot of us black folks don't get it. Sometimes you gotta give to get, right? <clears throat> so for example, when I went to the companies and I asked them about sponsoring my conference, I knew I had a couple of things that they would like. I knew I had 50 women that I had a sold out conference, right? So I knew that I was giving them marketing. Everybody's not going to just do stuff out of the goodness of their heart. I don't care how good a person is. Like there needs to be some type of a benefit, right? So, I mean, you, you got to be willing to give something to get it. L we can break it down even further. I, I'm going to tell you something. I can't stand when people will inbox me and ask me to share something of theirs and they don't ever like or comment or share any of my information, right? Some people are busy, I totally get it. But some people, you legitimately do not share my stuff. Like, you just don't. You don't ever support anything that I do, you know what I mean? You don't do any of those things, but yet you're coming to me and you're asking me for money. You're coming to me, you're asking me to share what it is that you're doing with the audience that I've cultivated over the last 10 years. You're asking me to do all that stuff. So you want me to give you something and you haven't given anything in return. You haven't even given your support, right? I'm telling you, this is like the basic stuff, right? So if we can have feelings about people not respecting our timelines, then think about that when you go and ask somebody something substantial, <laughs> right? If you're asking for something substantial or any type of substance, what can you give them? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, is there anything that you can give that's gonna make this a beneficial thing. You gotta be willing to do that. And if you don't have a response or an answer for that, maybe you shouldn't ask yet. You know what I mean? Figure it out. And let's be honest, sometimes you just need something. And sometimes your, your response is gonna be, look, I, I, don't, I don't know what I can give you, but you tell me what would be beneficial and I got you. That doesn't always work, it depends on the situation. But I would say think about what it is that you need before you ask and think it through, right? Go to people with a good proposal. The next thing you need to do is keep asking. Stop being afraid to ask over and over again. Sometimes, sometimes you ask the right person. Like sometimes you ask the person that was in the position to be able to help you and they chose to say no. There are a ton of other people that you can ask, right? So, I mean, I might have five people that ask me the same thing, but maybe it's just something about the way this person said it. Or maybe the Holy Spirit said, yeah, that's the one that you need to help, and I'll do it. So stop being afraid to ask. That's simple right there. And then the last thing I wanted to say is that when you get a no, there's some ways that you can handle it. Number one, don't get upset, right? Understand, just like you need to expect a yes, you also need to understand that the worst thing that could happen is maybe they're going to say no. You're not going to die from that, right? You know, I don't care if you're trying to borrow money. Guess what? God will make a way. I'm trying to tell y'all he's done it so many times for me. He has done it like God is going, God will open doors, right? And I'm not even trying to be super deep. It's just, it's what I know is going to happen, right? Like if one person says no, God will lay you on somebody else's mind that can bless you. Or God will lay somebody on your mind that you can ask about what it is that you need. You know what I mean? So you might be disappointed and you might be upset, but don't stay there. Right. You can't you can't stay in despair when you're in despair. You don't make dividends. Right. <laughs> OK. Like and I guess I guess this is kind of this is a life lesson. This is living boldly. But of course, you guys know, I, I, I talk a lot about business and I talk a lot about ministry and different things like that. So if, if you stay depressed and in despair, baby, you're not making money. If you stay depressed and you stay in despair, baby, you're not going to ever move from that place. Okay, I, I know that God gives us beauty for our ashes, but like, let's look at it this way, right? You know, I always get these metaphors. And so I, I, a lot of times I just start speaking. I just pray that they make sense. So I just, I thank God for who he is because he always makes them make sense. So um, a couple months ago, I spoke um, 
and I use the metaphor of a volcano, right? So one of the things that I said to people is like, okay, why would anybody ever want to live in an area where volcanoes are active, right? Because they're just so destructive. There is nothing that can stop the flow of a volcano, nothing. Like scientists actually try to do it. They tried pumping billions of tons of ice cold water, ice ocean water on the, the, the lava and it still would not stop the flow of the lava. Like nothing stops the heat. So there's a point in time in our life where nothing's going to stop the heat, right? But this is the reason why a lot of people choose to live near volcanoes. People choose to live near volcanoes because the ground is fertile, right? The ground is fertile. Now, it's not fertile when the volcano, when the ashes first settle. But as the ashes settle, then life begins to be breathed into the ashes, right? The ashes contain different things like phosphorus, and they contain different minerals and elements, and it begins to fertilize the soil. So yes, you might be in a valley right now, right? You might be in a valley. You might be in despair. You might be depressed. But if you stay in the ash, if you stay in the destruction, right? If you don't allow the minerals and, and what God needs to do, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like your mineral is allowing God to minister unto you. That's the Holy Spirit being able to minister unto you. That's you moving. I don't care if you got to move one inch every day, but have some type of movement in your life, right? And watch God do some things. If you stay in despair, if you stay in destruction, nothing ever becomes fertile, right? So God gives us beauty for our ashes, but the ashes have to be fertilized. So what are you doing even while you're depressed? Y'all, you y'all don't understand. I spent probably the last two years in a major depression. Y'all had no idea. Why? Because I kept moving, right? It didn't mean it didn't knock me down sometimes. You know, there, there were probably times that you guys didn't see me, right? There would be times that literally only close family and friends could connect with me, right? There were times that the business... It was not the best. I'm, I'm going to be really transparent with you. Shaquan is, is one of my amazing clients. And Shaquan was there with me in the middle of my despair. And there came a moment. And she's right here. She's live. There came a moment when I had to say to her, listen, I'm going through something. I am sorry I have not been at my best. I'm trying to do what I can do. And you know what? She spoke life into me. Right? So you got to be willing to allow life to be breathed into you. Right? You can't stay a pile of ashes because ashes do not produce. Right? Ashes fertilize the soil. The ashes are used to soak in the minerals. Right? In order to fertilize the soil. So that's the reason why people choose to live near destructive things like a volcano because it's beautiful there. Right. The water is glorious when you go to Hawaii. Right. Um, you, you have the most uh, the, the most exotic plants that are in that area. You can grow some of the best crops when you are near an area where it is destructive. What does this mean to you? Again, when you are in the midst of your despair and you're in the middle of a depression, if you allow God to begin to breathe life into you, if you move just one inch at a time, I mean, take it day by day, do one or two things a day. I don't care what it is, right? I had to start moving. There's got to be some type of movement. If you do that, watch, watch the blessings begin to, to just rain down on you, right? So when you begin asking for things and sometimes us asking for things, sometimes us asking is us moving in the middle of our despair. It's like, all right, God, I don't want to do this, but I, I need you. I need you to bless this thing, right? I need you to bless my business, right? I need you to bless my family. They're getting on your nerves. God, I need you to bless my kids. They're getting on your nerves. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, God, I need you to work some things out on this job because they're getting on my nerves, God. And even though I don't see it right away, like sometimes my asking for things is in the action of what we're doing, right? So the job sucks, but what I'm doing is I'm moving as if God has put me in a different place, right? Sometimes your asking is not even audible. Sometimes it's like, all right, God, I know I deserve more money than what I'm getting. I know I deserve better. I know I deserve to live better. Well, guess what? You start, you start walking like you're better, right? Fix your hair. Baby, put some makeup on, something. Start, start doing things and walking as if, act as if you expect it to be done. 
right? God, I need you to build my bank account. Well, then you need to do something good with the $5 that he gives you, right? I remember there was a point in time when I said, God, this is going to be the last $5 I ever borrowed from my parents, right? I had to borrow money from my parents so I could buy some toilet paper from my house. I said, God, I'm sick of borrowing from people. This is the last $5 I'm borrowing. God, I don't know what you're going to do, but I need you to do it. And he'll do it, right? So sometimes that's the asking, right? And sometimes the no is when things don't shift immediately, right? But you got to keep asking. You got to keep working. You got to keep walking toward it. And the other thing, the last thing I would say is when you get that no, don't burn a bridge, right? You're disappointed with the person? Sure. Are you upset with the person? Yeah, probably. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes it doesn't feel good getting a no all the time. It doesn't always feel good for that. But... Don't burn the bridge because you, you never know. Maybe they're testing you or maybe that thing's going to loop around years later. That has happened to me a lot too, right? So again, yesterday we talked about what? We talked about learning how to say no without explanation. And here we are on the other end of the coin and we're learning how to ask for what we want. I'm going to tell you the other thing that I think is important. You, you need to walk like you deserve what you want, right? I don't know why that's not, I didn't have that on there, but high five Jesus. Thank you. Because he brought that to he brought that in my mind. You you have to walk like you deserve it. A lot of times we don't ask for things because we, we don't feel like we deserve it. Why don't you deserve it? Why not you? Why not you having a six-figure salary? Why not you being able to finish school? Why not you being able to receive funding for your business? Why not you having an international ministry? Why not you having a best-selling book? Why not you being able to release your own music? Why not you being able to be a stand-up comic who doesn't have to cuss in order to receive attention? Why not you being able to put on that play that you wrote 20 years ago why not it's just because you didn't ask we stand in our own way so you gotta walk like you deserve that thing let me go through it again walk like you deserve what you want that's right Saquon so walk like you deserve what you want act as if you expect to get it ask as if you expect to get it ask the right people so pray about who those right people are I never take God out of anything right when you get the people in front of you make sure you get their full attention so sometimes you got to be ready have your research together don't you just go in there willy-nilly sometimes you can't help it sometimes you got to catch somebody in the elevator but when you have time to prepare baby be prepared you even need to be prepared for the elevator conversation right so in your off season when things feel off that's when you should be prepared for when you might meet the next big wig like what are you doing prepare Okay? Sometimes you got to give to get, right? So sometimes somebody's going to do something for you, but they're going to be expecting something, right? That's not always a bad thing. Because what you're doing is you're tilling the ground. You're sowing into what it is that you want, right? You're sowing into that soil so that it's fertile. So sometimes you got to give to get those things that you're asking for. You got to keep asking. You're not going to get a no the first time. Sometimes God allows a no because you're not ready. And that is just... The point blank and the period. I'm putting a D on there because I don't know why the kids put a T on there. But point blank period, right? You you have to keep asking, right? So if, if you get a no, maybe you want to be bold enough and ask them, well, why? Right? Maybe you don't feel like you should, but maybe you can ask. Well, what can I do differently? Right? You know what I mean? The next time that I ask. Shaquan says, pray, plan, and take massive action. Ah, she says that's her motto. Very good. Cindy says, yes, we stand in our own way. We stand in our own way, y'all, just because we don't ask and because we feel like we don't deserve it. And when we do ask, we go all meek and lowly. We go all bent over and stuff like we don't deserve to get what we're asking for. No, you better walk with expectation. Like, what are you doing? Right? Walk with expectation. And then just remember that if you get a no, how you doing, Dana? If you get a no... Even if you get upset, you can't wallow in that. Even if you feel a little bit depressed, you can't wallow in it, right? You need to make sure that your soil is fertile, okay? So you can't wallow in that. You can't stay upset. You can't stay, you know, disappointed. Because, again, those things don't produce dividends, right? Dividends is the final, it's the final line. So being depressed doesn't get you what you want. People, don't, people do not gravitate toward depressed people. They just don't. So if you're feeling depressed, you better act happy, right? Until God begins to give you that unspeakable joy. And I'm telling you, like, I, I, I look for joy in my life that, you know, even when things are not amazing, even when things are not, you know, going the right way, like sometimes I just find myself 
giddy with excitement. That's joy. That's 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 the only thing that God can give you, right? Like sometimes that money is funny, right? What would they say? The change is strange, but you just got joy and you just move different because you just like God. I know you got this thing, right? Happiness is something that we can create, and happiness is fleeting, and oftentimes it's gone in a moment, right? So. Seek for that joy, right? Go for that joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for that joy. And then don't burn bridges, y'all. Even if you don't ever work directly with that person, <clears throat> maybe they know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. Because here's the thing. Sometimes when people say no to us, we thought they were the right person, but maybe they're really not equipped to give us what we need. So I've had people come to me maybe for coaching, right? Um, and I And I had to say to them, I can't coach you. It wasn't because... I didn't think they were good enough. It wasn't because I didn't think that they had the goods. It, it was because I wasn't equipped for that, right? I wasn't equipped to do it. Sometimes you might be asking somebody for a financial blessing and they don't have it, right? Like, it doesn't matter how much money they look like they're slinging. Like, maybe they just don't have it, right? Because maybe they're they're walking they're walking the way that they're 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 walking toward their expected expected end, right? You sometimes you gotta walk as if you've already gotten what you're asking for. So I hope that this was helpful for somebody. I don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. I don't know what the what the, what it's gonna be, but we're talking about living a bold life. We're talking about living a courageous life, right? So again, if you missed yesterday, that's learning how to say no without giving some drawn out explanation, honey. Like everybody doesn't deserve an explanation. Like what is it? And then the other thing is for today is learning how to ask for what you want. Stop standing in your own way. You deserve the things that you want. You deserve it. If you feel like you're in a place where you don't feel like you deserve it, then you need to shift how you're moving. Like, who told you that you can't shift? Prepare. If what you want is going to take you going to school for 10 years, then, baby, you better enroll in something. You better you better apply for some financial aid if that's what you need. Like, you may not be ready right now the way that you are. It doesn't mean that you don't deserve to get what you want, but you got to work for it. I, I believe in God giving us divine connections. I believe in God, you know opening doors for us supernaturally but i also believe that we have to we got to work right we got to work for those things that we want also and oftentimes the blessings come because god knows that we've been working and we deserve everything that we that we're asking for you know what i mean like maybe you've been asking for a job right i i know i'm not the only person who's been given a job before that technically on paper i didn't qualify for it but it didn't mean I couldn't do it. It's just that on paper, I didn't qualify for it, right? But God opened the door. So yeah, God opens doors. God busts open windows. God will rip the roof off of a situation. I totally believe in all that stuff, but I also believe in being prepared, right? Because like, let's not make God look bad. I'm just saying. We're out here saying God did something and we're out here looking a hot mess. Stop lying. Because God didn't tell you to walk in that thing and be a hot mess. I'm just saying, <laughs> honey. Sometimes I need to stop being so real, right? Yeah, not. Nah. I'm just saying, out here lying on God, talking about God told me to do such and such. No, he didn't, because you look a mess. And if he, he he told you to wait, he told you you needed to go do X, Y, and Z, you jumped out on it, you jumped out and did it on your own, and now you're just making him look bad. Can we please stop making God look bad? I'm just saying. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway, I you know what? My homegirl is on here. We got uh, Dana Yuri on here. And Dana just published her book. And I'm really excited that I had the opportunity to work with Dana. And let me see here. I'm trying to see if I can put a link in here. Dana, put, put a link to your book in here because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do it on the computer. And uh, it's not working for me, dollface. It's not working. But anyway, so I, I'm really excited. Um, Dana has released, I think this is her third book. Right, Dana? I think this is your third book. So actually your your doctor, Dana. Like let me let me let me just give credit where credit is due, right? So, um, Dr. Dana actually just published the book 31 Days of Glory, right? It really, yes, yes, good stuff, Shaquan, for real. Um, 31 Days of Glory, it's um, nuggets from the heart of an intercessor. So, if you've been finding yourself in despair, despair it's prayers and nuggets, right? So, if you find yourself needing something, no, I'm calling you Dr. Dana because it's just fun. Like, I want people to call me Dr. Tamika, but I don't, I don't have a PhD yet, so... 
But y'all can call me Dr. Hall and I'll answer. I'm just saying. I tell everybody that. And now I go play.